good afternoon everyone so i am dr hamon prasad i am working as an assistant professor at uh, iir today i am going to deal a topic titled estimation of hardness of water by complexometric method the contents in this presentation are edta and its complexes principle involved in titration chemicals required for titration apparatus required for titration procedure for performing titration preparation of standard mgso4 solution standardization of edta solution and finally estimation of total hardness of water so let's go to the first content edta and its complexes so here i have shown uh, some of the structures of the important ligands and important complexes and also the indicator the ligand involved in this titration is edta its full form is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid it has six donor atoms in its structure four oxygen atoms and two nitrogen atoms so it acts as a hexadentate ligand so all the six donor atoms will bind with the hardness causing cations such as calcium ion and magnesium ion which are present in hot water sample and edta will make complex with mg2 plus as well as with ca2 plus so the fact is edta as such is insoluble in water so what we do for performing titration it should be soluble in water so we will replace it with disodium salt of edta which is formulated as na2 edta so we will take this disodium salt because it is completely soluble in water and it is suitable for the titration so please make a note that edta as such is not suitable for the titration and its disodium salt is suitable for the titration the structure of which is mentioned here and uh, the indicator used in this titration is ereochrome black t which is shortly ebt the color of ebt in free form is blue and when it binds with the hardness causing cations such as mg2 plus and ca2 plus it will be wine red in color so the ebt complex of ca2 plus and mg2 plus appears in wine red so during the titration what we do we will take uh, the water sample in a conical flask and we add the indicator first the free indicator as i told is blue in color and when it forms complex with the hardness causing cations it will appear wine red in color and uh, in addition with uh, the indicator we will also add uh, some buffer solution which is to maintain a basic buffer solution and which maintains the ph in the basic medium at basic ph only the edta can bind facilely with the hardness causing cations for that purpose we will take basic buffer solution so for repeating this point again the basic ph is the favorable ph where the edta favorably binds with the hardness causing cations so we will take water sample and we will add ebt indicator and we also add basic buffer solution which is ammonia buffer solution at this particular basic ph edta prefers to bind with the hardness causing cations so i hope you understand this point and i have also mentioned the structure of metal edta complex where the central metal is coordinated by six donor atoms of the edta ligand two nitrogens and four oxygens and a point to note is out of four oxygens two oxygens are in coordination with sodium in disodium salt of edta now what happens here is both the sodium atoms are replaced by the hardness causing cation in water either magnesium or calcium so both the oxygens which are previously bound with sodium 
are now bound by magnesium or calcium and these two are covalent bonds and the rest means remaining two oxygens and the two nitrogens will form dative bond or coordinate covalent bond with the hardness causing cation magnesium 2 plus or calcium 2 plus so that is how there are two covalent bonds and four coordinate covalent bonds in the structure of metal edta complex as i told the metal is either magnesium or calcium which are the hardness causing cations present in hard water sample and i have also shown the colors in this slide the free ebt is blue solid and when it is made solution in water it will appear blue because blue solid in water will give blue color solution and when ebta is added ebt is added which is indicator as i told it forms winded colored complex with the hardness causing cations so that is what i have shown here in this slide let's go to the next slide so the next content is principal involved in the titration the actual principal involved in this titration of hard water against edta is as i told in the previous slide ebt forms initially complex with uh, the hardness causing cations then uh, we have to add buffer solution also in the conical flask so three things will be taken in the conical flask hard water sample second thing is uh, ebt indicator third thing is buffer solution now here ebt complex of either calcium or magnesium will be formed which will appear wine red in color now when it is titrated against edta solution means disodium salt of edta then all the edta will replace the ebt complex as a result uh, the ebt complex will be disappeared now ebt will come into free form and edta will get complex with the hardness causing cations so why it will happen like that why edta replaces ebt because the ebt complex is unstable whereas the edta complex is stable the reason for the stability of edta complex is it will provide six donor atoms so hexadentate ligand uh, will give more stability to the complex so that is why edta complex is more stable hence it has the capacity to replace the ebt ligand so that is the actual principle involved in this titration now why the final color is blue so the point is uh, very interesting and easy here the edta complex as such is colorless but a point to note is ebt will come into free form whose color is blue because of that at the end point you can see blue colored solution so the initial color is wine red which is due to the unstable ebt complex with either ca2 plus or mg2 plus and after titrating against edta the color will appear blue this is not due to the edta complex of ca or mg it is due to the free form of ebt indicator so please make a note of this i hope you all understood let's go to the next content the chemicals required for this titration so there are five chemicals required in this titration first one is as i told in the previous slides disodium salt of edta which is simply formulated as na2 edta and the second one is magnesium sulfate heptahydrate which is formulated as mgso4 dot 7h2o commercially this salt is called epsom salt and we will use this salt for the preparation of standard hard water sample so to prepare this one we will take a fixed amount of epsom salt means mgso4 dot 7h2o then we will add distilled water not tap water because tap water will already contain calcium and magnesium ions but if you take the distilled water which is free from calcium and magnesium ions and now the distilled water will form complex with uh, the magnesium ion present in the added salt that is epsom salt now this is called standard hard water sample so standard hard water sample means we have the fixed concentration of hardness causing cations and the third one is ebt 
has a tool uh, that will act as an indicator which will show a color change at the end point in the titration. And the fourth chemical required for this titration is uh, buffer solution, basic buffer solution. So in this titration we will use ammonia buffer solution. So here the components in this buffer solution are one is uh, NH3 and NH4 plus. So as you know that buffer solution contains two components. One is uh, a weak acid and its uh, corresponding conjugate acid or a weak base and its corresponding conjugate acid. So since we are using ammonia buffer solution, you know that it is a basic buffer solution. So the two components required in this titration are weak base and corresponding uh, conjugate acid. So the weak base involved in this titration, involved in this basic buffer solution is NH3 and the corresponding strong conjugate acid is NH4 plus. Okay. So this is the fourth uh, chemical required in the titration. And finally, we need uh, hard water sample, hard water sample. So hard water sample means directly we can use tap water. Okay. So these five are the chemicals uh, required for this titration. Let's go for the next content. The operators required for titration. As I have shown here, you need uh, pipette for pipetting uh, either 10 ml or 20 ml of the standard hard water sample. And uh, you need a burette for uh, preparing uh, EDTA solution and making up to the zero mark. So generally we will use 50 ml uh, burette where we will fill 50 ml of EDTA solution. So you, you, you will use disodium salt of EDTA for making solution because it is completely soluble in water and is suitable for titration. And you also need standard volumetric flask. Here uh, 100 ml standard volumetric flask we generally use means the volume of the total solution that we make is 100 ml. So that is why it is standard volumetric flask. Standard means known volume. So what is the known volume in this case? 100 ml. So there will be mark at the top side. So up to the mark uh, it will indicate 100 ml. So the total solution will be 100 ml. And uh, we will use wash bottle where we will take uh, distilled water and we will uh, use from wash bottle. We will squeeze. It is also called a squeeze bottle. We will press it, then water will fall from the uh, pipe, uh, some little pipe kind of thing is there. No? So from there water will slide. And we also need a weighing bottle. And this is for the purpose of uh, weighing uh, the MgSO4.7H2O salt. Because in the first step we need to prepare uh, the hard water sample, standard hard water sample. So for that you need to add uh, MgSO4.7H2O into distilled water. So for that purpose we use wash water, not wash water, weighing water. And the next one is conical flask. In conical flask uh, we used to take standard hard water sample or direct hard water sample, number one. Number two, we will take EBT indicator and number three, we will take basic buffer solution that is ammonia buffer solution. So all these three things we will mix in uh, conical flask, then we will titrate it against EDTA solution, which is uh, taken in burette. So the burette will be placed in the top side and conical flask will be placed in the bottom side. And uh, finally, we need analytical balance where uh, we weigh the salt, that is MgSO4.7H2O salt for the preparation of standard hard water sample. So these are the operators required for titration. And uh, let's go to the next content, procedure for performing titration. So what is the actual procedure to perform this titration? So as I am telling from the beginning, the procedure for performing this titration involves three steps. Step one is preparation of standard MgSO4 solution means preparation of standard hard water sample. This is also called preparation of standard hard water sample. Standard 
hard water sample. This is step one, and step two includes standardization of EDTA solution. Means we will take the standard hard water sample which is prepared in step one, and using that we will find the concentration of EDTA solution. So this is called standardization of EDTA solution. What is the meaning of standardization? Standardization, knowing the concentration of the solution. Which solution here? EDTA solution. So that is called standardization. Standardization means knowing the concentration. Okay. So for this, we are taking the help of uh, standard hard water sample that is prepared in the previous step. That is step one. So step two is standardization of EDTA solution. And in the final step, that is step three, we will find the total hardness of hot water, means direct tap water. Okay, so step three is determination of, or estimation of total hardness of water. So these are the three steps involved in the performing of titration. Let's go to the first step, and later second step, and finally third step. And after showing these three steps, I will also explain this hardness of water using a numerical problem also. So let's look at the first step, preparation of standard MgSO4 solution, which is also called preparation of standard hard water sample. So here we will take the given salt that is magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. As I told, it is commercially called Epsom salt. So we will take the fixed amount of that, you can take any amount, roughly you can take 0.5 grams and uh, initially what you will do, you will weigh it in a weighing bottle. So means you will place it in a weighing bottle and the weighing bottle will have a cap, so which I have shown in the previous slide. So here you can see the weighing bottle, 15 ml weighing bottle is given here, this one. So here cap is there. You will open the cap and you will transfer a fixed amount, either 0.5 grams of uh, MgSO4.7H2O, and then you will close with the cap. So, this will be weight of weighing bottle plus weight of salt together. Okay. So, W1 is weight of bottle along with weight of salt or substance. And then, what we do after taking the weight of these two together, we will maintain or we will mark it as W1 and its unit is grams. Then we will transfer the salt from weighing bottle to standard volumetric flask which I have shown here. So this one, this one is standard volumetric flask. Here we will transfer. Okay. And then the weighing bottle will be empty now and we will measure the weight of the empty weighing bottle and we will mark it as W2. Its unit is also grams. Okay. So W1 is weight of bottle along with substance or salt. WD is weight of empty bottle. So in order to get the weight of salt, what you have to do? You have to subtract W1 from W2. So W1 minus W2 will give the weight of salt or substance. So finally, what you have to do in this step, you have to find the concentration of standard hard water sample in terms of normality. So normality is formulated as weight upon equivalent weight into 1000 by volume of solution. Normality is formulated as weight upon equivalent weight into 1000 by volume of solution, V. Here the unit of weight is grams and the unit of equivalent weight is gram per equivalent and 1000 is a constant, so it is unitless, so you will take uh, 1 divided by and the weight of uh, volume of solution in this case is liter, okay. So then gram gram will get cancelled and the equivalent will go to the numerator and finally you will get equivalent upon liter. So the unit of normality is equivalent per liter. Okay. So let's see one by one W1 minus W2 you will get from the W1 minus W2 value 
you will get from the two readings W1 and W2 and the equivalent weight of substance is fixed. For example, in case of MgSO4.7H2O, let us calculate the equivalent weight. So, the atomic weight of magnesium is 24, sulfur is 32, oxygen is 16, 4 oxygens are there, 4 into 16, 64. And the molecular weight of water is 18, 2 hydrogens, 2 into 1 plus 1 oxygen, 16, 2 plus 16, 18. So, 7 water molecules are there, 7 into 18, 126. Okay. So, if you add all of these together, 4 plus 2, 6, plus 4, 10, plus 6, 16, 2 plus 1, 3, plus 6, 9, 12, 14, 2, 46. This is the molecular weight. But you need equivalent weight in this case. So, in order to calculate equivalent weight, we have to divide this molecular weight by the total charge on cation or anion. So, you can take cation. So, total charge on cation is 2. So, if you divide by 2, you will get 123. So, the equivalent weight of MgSO4.7H2O salt is 123 and the unit is gram upon equivalent. Gram upon equivalent. Okay. And uh, W1 minus W2 by equivalent weight into 1000 by V. So, V is volume of solution. As I told uh, here, we are using 100 ml standard volumetric flask. So, the volume of the solution will be 100 ml. Okay. So, in order to convert that 100 ml into liter, we are multiplying by 100, 1000. So, 1000 by V will give you the unit of volume in liters. 100 ml is there, no? So, if you do it 1000 by V, it will convert into liters. Okay. So, let us go to the next step. That is standardization of EDTA solution. So, in the first step, we have prepared a standard hard water sample. Now, we are titrating the standard hard water sample against EDTA solution. So, we will take 10 ml of standard hard water sample in the conical flask and we add EBT indicator, then the color appears wine red. Later, we will add basic buffer solution to form the complex of EDTA and we will take as such the three mixture. The three will be, one is standard hard water sample, second one is EBT indicator, third one is basic buffer solution that we will take in conical flask. Then on the top side, we have a burette which is filled with EDTA solution. Then you will start titrating against uh, EDTA. Then uh, at certain point, uh, the color will appear blue, which indicates the end point. Okay. So, which indicates the end point, which will indicate here, it is indicated by indicator. So, what is the indicator in this titration? EBT, areochrome black T. Okay. Because of this, you will observe the color changes. Okay. So, when there is a color change, you will uh, understand that the titration is completed and you will repeat the titration for another two times. So, total three times you will do the titration and you will take the average of three readings, which will be V2 which will be V2. The average of three readings will be actual V2. Okay. And uh, at the end point, you will use a formula N1 V1 equal to N2 V2. This is the formula at the end point. Okay. So, where N1 and V1 are the normality and volume of standard hard water sample and N2 V2 are the normality and volume of EDTA solution. So, you know the N1 value which is calculated in step 1 and you know the V1 value which is 10 ml. You can see the table. So, 10 ml we have taken in each reading and V2 value is the average volume of EDTA consumed in the titration and uh, finally, you can calculate N2. Okay. So, if N1 V1 equal to N2 V2, then N2 will be N1 V1 by V2. So, using this formula, you will calculate the concentration of EDTA. So, once you know the concentration of EDTA, that will become standard solution. So, that is why the second step is called standardization of EDTA solution. I hope you all understood what is happened in this uh, second step. Let us go to the third step. 
estimation of total hardness of water so this is the final step and uh, we will get the required total hardness of water in this step but for this step you need to perform first and second step then only you can perform the third step okay yeah so what you will do here you will take uh, tap water directly then uh, you will take it in a conical flask so let's take 50 ml of direct tap water so this is hot water sample okay and along with this you will add another two things what are those two things as i told second one is ebt indicator third one is basic buffer solution okay after mixing these three in conical flask you will titrate the mixture against edta solution and uh, you will take three readings as we have shown in step two the first reading you will get the end point where the color changes from wine red to blue here also the initial color will be wine red because in direct tap water also there are magnesium and calcium ions because they are hardness causing cations okay in the first step what we did we have taken the water which is free from calcium and magnesium ions but we have added magnesium ions sectionally means we have added mgso4.7h2o no? so that will provide the mg2 plus ions since there are no magnesium or calcium ions in the water sample but here we are directly taking tap water which obviously contains uh, the magnesium 2 plus and calcium 2 plus cations so that is why the addition of ebt will result in the formation of wine red colored complex okay yes so when you titrate the mixture of these three against uh, edta solution at the end point the color will change to blue which indicates that the titration has completed and you will repeat the titration for another two times so total three times and the average of three readings will be v2 or v3 in this case okay average of three readings will be v2 okay so now at the end point you will have n2 v2 equal to n3 v3 this is the one you will use at end point in the previous step we have taken n1 v1 equal to n2 v2 where one corresponds to standard hard water sample and in this step we have taken n2 v2 equal to n3 v3 where 3 corresponds to direct tap water or direct hard water so 2 corresponds to edta as usual so n2 and v2 correspond to the normality and volume of edta solution and n3 v3 corresponds to the normality and volume of direct tap water or hard water okay so here you know the n2 value which you have calculated in previous step n2 equal to n1 v1 by v2 here you have calculated n2 value and using that n2 value and v2 value which is average of three readings and v3 value is 50 ml and you will use all the values and you will find the value of n3 means the concentration of hard water means the concentration of direct tap water and what is the unit of this one here normal or as i have calculated previously it will be equivalent per liter let's see there if you have doubt can you see here equivalent per okay so now but the actual unit of hardness of water is ppm parts per million or milligram per liter so now we have to convert this equivalent per liter into milligram per liter how to do that let's see here n3 into 50 into 1000 you can convert this unit from normality or equivalent per liter into ppm by multiplying with 50 and 1000 how it will convert i will demonstrate you let's uh, observe carefully n3 unit is equivalent per liter into what is 50 here 50 is equivalent weight of calcium carbonate in which we will express the hardness of water that i have already explained so 50 that is equivalent weight equivalent weight unit is gram upon equivalent and what is thousand thousand is the parameter that you will use to convert grams into milligrams 
as you know 1 gram equal to 1000 milligrams right so the gram will be converted into milligrams if you multiply by 1000 so unit of 1000 will be milligram per gram so perform the cancellations gram gram will get cancelled equivalent equivalent will get cancelled and the remaining unit is milligram per liter it is also called ppm parts per million so this is the actual unit of hardness of water so this is how you will calculate the or you will estimate the hardness of water so for this how many steps you require three steps step one includes the preparation of standard hard water sample which we will make by using mgso4.7h2o salt which is called epsom salt and step two includes the standardization of edta solution and finally step three includes determination of hardness of water here you will find the total hardness of water okay and uh, how do you find the temporary hardness and permanent hardness i will demonstrate in, in this slide only if you take tap water and boil it after boiling filter it then it will be free from the temporary hardness causing salts that means the boiled and filtered water will be having only permanent hardness okay if you boil and filter the tap water then it will contain only permanent hardness okay so instead of direct tap water if you use boil and filtered tap water you will get permanent hardness let's say the concentration of this sample is n4 in that case n4 v4 equal to n2 v2 so here two corresponds to edta and four corresponds to boiled and filtered water so you will find the n4 value by using this relation n2 v2 by v4 okay yes and if you multiply this n4 with uh, 50 and 1000 it will be converted into ppm and which will be permanent hardness and now the remaining is temporary hardness how do you find the temporary hardness if you subtract permanent hardness from total hardness what you will get temporary hardness okay total hardness minus permanent hardness will give you the temporary hardness okay so for finding the total hardness you will directly use the tap water means hard water direct tap water or hard water and for calculating the permanent hardness you will take the tap water you will boil it and you will filter it and you will titrate against edta to give permanent hardness in order to get temporary hardness you have to subtract permanent hardness from total hardness you will get temporary hardness I hope you all understood how to get uh, temporary and permanent hardness using total hardness. Okay. Let's go to the numerical problem where we can uh, demonstrate how to calculate uh, all these three things. In fact, we can do the fourth thing that is permanent hardness from that you can do temporary hardness also. Okay. Let's see the problem. 0.5 grams of calcium carbonate was dissolved in HCl and the solution made up to 100 ml the solution made up to 100 ml so the volume of solution is 100 ml with distilled water so the solution is made with distilled water okay and 20 ml of this solution required 10 ml of edta solution 20 ml of this solution required 10 ml of edta solution for the titration this is given in the problem itself and 50 ml of hard water sample required 20 ml of edta if you take 50 ml of hard water sample means direct tap water it required 20 ml of edta and after boiling and filtering it required 15 ml of edta solution means direct hard water required 20 ml of edta boiled and filtered hard water required 15 ml of okay what we have to do here we have to calculate temporary and permanent hardness of water 
So let's go step by step procedure. First, you have to calculate n1 value. So that I have shown already in the previous slides. N1 will be calculated by using weight upon equivalent weight into 1000 by 1. What is weight here? 0.5 grams. And what is equivalent weight of CSEO3? 50. Okay. 0 0.5 divided by 50 into 1000 divided by V. What is volume of solution? 100. And if you simplify, you will get 0 0.1 normal. If you simplify, you will get 0 0.1 normal. What is this value? N1 value. N1 means uh, concentration of standard hard water sample. Okay. Here we have made uh, standard hard water sample using directly CaCO3. Okay. And secondly, you will find uh, the concentration of EDTA solution by using N2 equal to N1 V1 divided by V2. What is N1 value that we have calculated in the previous step? That is 0 0.1 normal into what is V1 value? V1 is 20 ml because here it is mentioned 20 ml of this solution means V1 is 20 ml and required how much of EDTA solution? 10 ml of EDTA. So, V2 is 10. And if you simplify, you will get 0.2 normal. If you simplify, you will get 0.2 normal. Okay. So, this is the concentration of EDTA solution. And you will use N2 value to find the concentration of hard water, means direct tap water. Let us see. N3 equal to N2 V2 divided by V3. What is N2 that you got in previous step? That is 0.2 into. What is V2? How much EDTA is required in this titration? 20 ml of EDTA. So, you will take 20 divided by and how much of sample you have taken? 50 ml of hard water. Okay. So, V3 is 50. If you simplify, you will get 0 0.08, 0 0.008 or 0.008 normal. You will get 0. 0.008 okay as i told the hardness is expressed in units of milligram per liter or ppm in order to convert into ppm this normality is multiplied by 50 and 1000 then you will get 400 then you will get 400 in units of ppm ppm means parts per million what is this 400 ppm total hardness of direct tap water means hard water this is what water? Hard water. Means given water. I hope you understood. Now, we will find the permanent hardness. So, we find now total hardness. Now, we will find permanent hardness. That is N4 equal to N2 V2 divided by V4. Here N2 value you got here in this step. That is uh, 0 0.2 normal. And V2. How much EDTA is required in this titration? Here it is mentioned. 15 ml of EDTA. So, V2 is 15 divided by. What is V4? How much volume you have used? The same after boiling and filtering means the same volume you have used. 50. So, V4 will be 50. And if you simplify, you will get 0.006 normal. You will get 0.006 normal. And the actual unit of hardness is ppm. You have to convert it into ppm by multiplying with 50 and 1000. So, if you do so, you will get 300 ppm. So, the permanent hardness of water sample is 300 ppm. And uh, you got temporary hardness. You will get temporary hardness by subtracting permanent hardness from total hardness. So, you got total hardness as 400 ppm. This is total hardness. And you got permanent hardness as 300 ppm. And if you subtract these two, you will get 100 ppm. You will get 100 ppm. And what is 100 ppm? This is the value of temporary hardness of given water sample. Okay. So, that is how you have to calculate total hardness, permanent hardness and temporary hardness. Once again, I am repeating. First step, you have to calculate the concentration of standard hard water sample, which is N1. 
Using this, you have to calculate the concentration of EDTA solution. That is N2. Using N2, you have to calculate the total hardness of direct tap water or hard water. That is N3. And in units of normality, you have to convert it into ppm by multiplying with 50 and 1000. And if you use boiled and filtered hard water, you will get permanent hardness because it is free from temporary hardness causing salts. Then uh, you will subtract permanent hardness from total hardness in order to get temporary hardness. So that is for today's session. Thank you very much for your patience. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.